What's up, guys? Foxy coming to you guys with a brand new video. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how Call of Duty Vanguard is pretty much following this trend and how Call of Duty is following this trend of just feeding Warzone. And in addition to that, within this video, oh, there's a lot of parallels between COD 4, World at War, and Modern Warfare 2019 and Call of Duty Vanguard because I just noticed how it was very, very similar how one game comes out and then the next game kind of just is almost a reskin in a way this is my opinion obviously i feel like i don't have to say that but i'm not speaking for everyone i'm just telling you guys how i feel about it and how i look at the whole situation of uh, modern warfare and vanguard i want to bring this to your attention as well i'm not blaming sledgehammer games for this the developers of any video game just make the game especially when they answer to a publisher so what they're being told to make is what they have to make Activision is the one who is telling them to make a game pretty much identical to Modern Warfare. So please do not bash the devs and say it's their fault. All they do is make the games, and I want to make sure that you guys know that as the viewer. And I don't want them to think that I'm saying their work sucks, because it doesn't. But before I hop into the video, I want to say that Code Foxy is... A, uh, I don't know if it's 10% or 30% off at gfield.com right now. It's one of the two. It's down in the description below. Click that link and the code will already be added and all that good stuff. So without further ado, let's go, bros. So Call of Duty Vanguard, in my opinion, is a double-edged sword. The game plays just like a Call of Duty game should, but at the cost of being repetitive. A lot of people that don't play Call of Duty will say, Call of Duty is the same game every year, though. And I agree with you. However, there are differences in these games. No matter what anyone wants to say, there are differences. In my opinion, mainly within the last three years, mainly Call of Duty Modern Warfare and Vanguard, it's almost too repetitive. Is Call of Duty multiplayer's job to feed Warzone? Is that the only job that Call of Duty multiplayer has now? Before I say anything else, I want to say that I believe every single Call of Duty game should be on the Modern Warfare engine. With Warzone being as popular as it is, there should be no reason why any Call of Duty game does not use the Modern Warfare engine. The engine is fantastic, it has great visuals, and it should be the engine that all Call of Duty games use in the future. The only exception to this is Cold War, because apparently, according to sources, Activision told Treyarch to take over the horrible development of COD 2020, due to Sledgehammer Games and Raven butting heads, not coming to an agreement and not pushing the game's development cycle forward and pretty much not being able to complete the game. Now, just like COD 4 and World at War, Modern Warfare 2019 and Call of Duty Vanguard play insanely similar in terms of multiplayer. So is that a good thing? I'm not really sure. I'll be referring to Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare as COD 4 and Modern Warfare 2019 as Modern Warfare, so that way you guys don't get anything mixed up. First off, if you like Modern Warfare, you'll probably like Call of Duty Vanguard. I know the World War II setting isn't everyone's favorite, but the game plays nearly identical to Modern Warfare, minus a couple of things. I feel like I should remind everybody that the multiplayer games are feeding Warzone now. The multiplayer is not the main focus right now, and it won't be as long as Warzone is huge. People who say it's dead uh, have no idea what they're talking about. Is it infested with cheaters and stuff? Yes, it is, but you know. <laughs> so because Warzone is the main attraction for Call of Duty and because Warzone is run on the Modern Warfare engine, most of the streaks, weapons, perks, lethals, and tacticals have to be the same, if not almost the same as the ones in modern warfare in order to make a smooth transition for players and when i say a smooth transition i mean jumping from multiplayer to warzone or i mean i don't really see people jumping from warzone to multiplayer because the people who play warzone only play the multiplayer to level up the guns so now that i've call of duty explained that warzone is the main focus for call of duty in my opinion there are very few differences between modern warfare and Vanguard multiplayer, just like COD 4 and World at War. I'll start with the UI, and you could probably take a shot every single time I say UI. It'll be a couple, so. Because Modern Warfare and Warzone share the same UI, the UI for the past three games has been the exact same besides the background and characters. 
I know it's a different setting and they kind of change it up, but it's the same thing. Like, look at the UI, man. It's it's all the same. Is that a big deal though? Yes and no. It's a good thing because it keeps a sense of familiarity with the players who play Warzone. Because it's familiar, players won't have to figure out where everything is on the new UI for each new game that releases. That's a good thing. The problem with this is that it doesn't feel new and this same thing happened back in 2011 with modern warfare 3's ui the problem with modern warfare 3's ui was that it looked identical to modern warfare 2's ui it, they didn't change it and i know that's probably because of what was going on at the time with infinity ward and stuff but it didn't feel new it didn't feel fresh it just felt like it was a copy and paste of modern warfare 2's ui and you can make that argument for cod 4 and world at war but cod 4 and world at war have completely different tones to them and modern warfare and vanguard just don't the opening cinematic or the opening music to world at war is vastly different than cod 4 and it just sets the tone right away <laughs> Thousand people used to live here. All right, so let's get so now that I'm done with like the UI and everything like that, let's talk about. Uh, let's talk about the gameplay, the gun aspects, all this other stuff that I've noticed is pretty much like either slightly changed, but not really, you know? So I love Gunsmith. I think the Gunsmith is very creative. Uh, when they announced Gunsmith at the Modern Warfare 2019 multiplayer reveal, I was just dumbstruck. I was like, this is awesome. This is so much customization. It's a great way for people to express themselves and want to run certain attachments and they don't have to be limited to the pick 10 system because we had seven years straight of the pick 10 system. The problem with Gunsmith in every game is it just seems like they might run out of ways to innovate it. They've done a good job so far, but what are they going to do for Call of Duty 2022 or AKA the second installment of Modern Warfare? With Modern Warfare, you could have five attachments on your primary and secondary. In Cold War, you could have five attachments on your primary and secondary, or you could run a wild card and have seven attachments. Now in Vanguard, you have 10 attachments on your primary and secondary weapon. I'd say that's pretty good innovation and progress. But like I said before, what happens after this? Do they go back to pick 10 and restrict customization? Because if they go back to pick 10 for the second installment of Modern Warfare, They'll have to implement pick 10 into Warzone, and that just sounds like a complete mess, and I I don't even want to think about that, to be honest. From what I've played and what I've seen, Gunsmith now allows you to pick your ammo type and your magazine type. That's a good way to elaborate on Gunsmith, but like, what else? Besides the somewhat input lag or whatever it is that you know, some of the S&D guys are talking about with tax sprint that like the gameplay is identical, almost 99% identical to Modern Warfare. Uh, there's minor tweaks here and there, but you can feel it as soon as you play your first match. I know I did. So like I said, tax sprint is back and so is slide canceling. I'm a fan of these. I like the movement in Modern Warfare. I don't expect the movement to change drastically. There's other things around the movement, like other things within the game that could make the game feel fresh. I'm glad that the movement is similar to Modern Warfare. In my opinion, Cold War felt super clunky, but the other parts of the game need to play different than Modern Warfare, you know? You guys, you guys get what I'm saying? There are some new features like moving your gun side to side while you're mounted or the blind fire mechanic, but let me just tell you how it is. 
the blind fire mechanic, the mounting, the sliding around while mounting, it's in the game for camo challenges. Is it a cool feature? I mean, yeah, sure. The blind fire mechanic has always been used by the computer when you play campaign and they're like shooting over the wall and stuff like that. But we've never had that in the multiplayer and been able to do it firsthand. So yeah, I think that's cool because it might add a new dynamic. But what else? What else? What else are you showing me that makes this game completely different or feel completely fresh and new from Modern Warfare? Not much. Most of you are going to be like, well, um, you can break stuff in the map now. That's my next point. So you beat me to it. They brought in a form of Battlefield's Levolution. It pretty much allows players to break and destroy certain structures within the maps. The feature is supposed to create new types of gameplay in each match. That's cool. But when this was first announced for Vanguard, I immediately thought of buildings being destroyed and taken down. It just gave me flashbacks of Battlefield. But it's not like that at all. So, <laughs> so I feel like this feature might be implemented in Warzone when the integration happens in November. But in my opinion, the reason why the Levolution isn't as grandiose as Battlefield is because Call of Duty has to cater to its competitive scene as well. I just can't see the fourth story falling completely down the building, crashing and burning during the grand finals of around 11 search and destroy for the CDL. I just, I just don't see that happening, sorry. Sledgehammer Games has also confirmed that there will be map weather effects, but I didn't really notice this during the beta. Oh, side note, please fix the fucking sun. I'm being blinded, paralyzed, and dumbstruck by this damn sun in this game. Thank you. I don't have to tell you that the perks, the lethals and tacticals are pretty much the same, but they're under a different name. That's pretty common for Call of Duty titles. But then when I look at games like Modern Warfare 2 and Black Ops 1, the lethals and tacticals, they, yeah, there's some similarities. There's frag, there's stun, flash, semtex, but then there's other things too, like the camera you could set up and they just gave people different equipment and things to use. You know what? Maybe that was, they maybe, maybe the camera was an equipment. Either way, my point still stands. There were still other gameplay factors and other ways that you could change the game and have it not feel the same. Modern Warfare 2 and Black Ops 1 do not play the same. I feel that way because I liked Modern Warfare 2 more. I didn't really like Black Ops 1 back in the day. I appreciate it now, obviously, but you know, back in the day, I was a bigger fan of Modern Warfare 2. Another good example is Black Ops 4 doesn't feel anything like Modern Warfare, even though both games have perks that do the same things. Black Jacket is similar to EOD, Attack Mask is similar to Battle Harden, Engineer is similar to Spotter, etc, etc. You, you guys get the gist. For the field upgrades in Vanguard, Sledgehammer Games pretty much just took the field upgrades from Modern Warfare and Cold War and put them into this game. The Munitions Box and Dead Silence are back from Modern Warfare, and the Field Mic is back from Cold War. Honestly, you could take the body armor and apply that to Warzone. It like, you see, what you see where I'm getting at here? The supply box animation for Vanguard is the exact same as Modern Warfare. You see what I mean? I get it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But man, just do, like make it a different animation or something like that. And while we're on the topic of animations, a lot of the time when you do an assassination in this game or a finisher or whatever, the character in the game is holding a Modern Warfare gun. I feel like such a nitpicky person doing this, and I don't want you guys to think that I'm saying that I hate this game, because I don't. I actually had a good amount of fun playing it, but I feel like there's not enough change in how things are presented so it feels new. It, it's just way too similar, you know? And let me reiterate this. It's one thing if there's a couple things that are similar and carried over from game to game. It's a whole different ball game when almost every single thing is copy and paste. As I say that, we're gonna move into the kill streaks. So the kill streaks work in the same way too. If you get four kills in Modern Warfare, you could either choose a UAV, counter UAV, or a, uh, a care package thingy. In Vanguard, it's the exact same, literally the exact same three streaks for four kills. That could change for the final game, but in the beta, that's how it is. It's just really weird to see. The Intel streak is the exact same as personal radar, and the Flamenot is just a variation of the Juggernaut streak. But instead of a death machine, you get a flamethrower. And instead of you holding the death machine in the Juggernaut suit, the death machine is its own streak. And the same thing with the war machine. And then the glide bomb returns from Call of Duty World War II. 
and i don't really have a problem with this because the glide bomb is pretty cool it's like a predator missile it's just a world war ii take on the predator missile the glide bomb is similar to it's literally copy and paste from world war ii i do have an issue with the sound effect because it's literally ripped copy and paste from world war ii but Once again, it sounds World War II, so I'm not going to complain too much. I expect it because it has a World War II sound to it. So I'm also really glad that they brought back attack dogs. We haven't seen attack dogs since Black Ops 2. And it's just, I don't know, man. Dogs are just so nostalgic. Not, not Riley. Sorry, Riley. I might get a lot of flack for this. I'm, I will, you know what? I will probably get a bunch of people in the comments tell me that I'm just so fucking dumb. The maps in this beta are not horrible by any means. They're way better than Call of Duty World War II's maps. I'll, you know, I'll even go as far as saying that they are more enjoyable than Modern Warfare's maps, in my opinion. Okay, so I've heard multiple pronunciations of this of this map name, and I don't know which one it is. So Gavutu or Gavutu or whatever Gavmutu uh, gives me cliffside vibes from World of War. Eagle's Nest and Hotel Royal are your typical three lane maps that are needed in COD games. It, it's just a staple. And Red Star appeals to the new assault and blitz modes because those modes increase the player count for each team. The assault mode is 8v8, which is just the ground war mode from the older COD games. Don't know why they just didn't call it ground war. Maybe so that way they didn't confuse people with Modern Warfare's ground war. That's probably what it was. Blitz is 14v14 and almost the same size as Big Team Battle for Halo, which is 12v12. So Chamber Games has also confirmed the remix of fan favorite maps from Call of Duty World at War, Castle and Dome, and they'll probably be there at launch, I'm going to assume. I'm very excited for those because I've waited years for them to remake Castle. I hope they play well. I'd love to see CeeLo get remade as well for the Assault and Blitz mode, please. Bloodjammer Games, please remake CeeLo. At least for the Blitz mode. Because it's you know, 28 players. Just remake CeeLo. Remake it! <laughs> there's also a rumor going around that Shipman is going to be in the game too. And if that's the case, there's another reason as to why Vanguard will be called a Modern Warfare reskin. Another side note, I've seen multiple clips of hackers to the point where the host can end the game. Huh? I haven't seen that since like World at War. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm sure that'll be fixed come launch and then the anti-cheat will help too. But man, it's just really wild to see. Real quick, this is something different between the two games, but it's so unnecessary and I have no idea why they did this. There are no factions in Vanguard. <laughs> and the multiplayer announcer is the same for everyone. You guys know me. I love immersion in my video games, especially Call of Duty. The factions are my team and enemy team. And that's just so lame, bro. It kills the immersion for me. The campaign takes place on multiple fronts. So why aren't there multiple factions in the multiplayer? I love the voice lines of the soldiers. They're really cheesy and they just give me a good laugh every single time I hear them. Throwing a stunner. Oh, do that. Okay. I'm not feeling so good. I'm not feeling so good. <laughs> I think the announcer saying double kill, triple kill, etc. is awesome. New intel, ready for report. Double kill. Double kill. <laughs> I, I don't think I'll ever get tired of that, to be honest. I've been saying for years that Call of Duty should do that because Halo's been doing it for so long. But what good is that feature if it's only one person saying it? There should be factions and multiple people should be able to do that, you know? They could even do announcer DLC. If it was like a classic character like Reznov, even though I guess technically that wouldn't make sense in the universe, I'd pay for that. Having Reznov say double kill, triple kill, frenzy kill, dude, I, I would pay for that, easy. Vanguard plays smooth as it should because the Modern Warfare engine is buttery smooth. I had fun playing it for the couple hours that I did, but it just felt nearly identical to Modern Warfare. And in my opinion, there wasn't a lot of things that made it stand out from Modern Warfare, besides the fact that it's a World War II game instead of a Modern Warfare game. I understand the term, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, but what about making new innovations that make the game feel completely different 
from the game before it so what did you guys think of the vanguard beta um did you guys enjoy it do you guys agree with my points do you guys think i'm a fucking idiot uh do you guys think it's just a modern warfare reskin let me know down in the comments thanks so much for watching guys i really do appreciate you and yeah see you guys later goodbye